packing her bag for another day at school in a foreign country without her parents. 17-year-old Zulema is a Uyghur, a predominantly Muslim ethnic minority in China. Riots in the Uyghur community have met with repeated crackdowns by Chinese authorities. After her father's death, Zulema fled to Germany to start a new life. She says she always thinks about how hard it was to come to Germany and learn so many new things here. Learn new things and learn them successfully. I ask myself how does one start a new life as a traumatized teenager and who provides guidance along such a difficult path. One big source of support for Zulema is the Schlau School in Munich. It's a special institution that was set up to instruct and help integrate underage refugees. The student body here comes from many of the world's most troubled places, Somalia, Iraq, Afghanistan, to name a few. The kids have all fled civil wars, chaos, and violence. And they all want the same thing as Zulema. It is my dream to have a peaceful life, she says. Not just going to school and getting a job. Everyone here has that. My dream is to live independently in a democracy. Today's first period is math class. It's algebra level stuff, solving equations. And it's all in German. A language the kids are still in the process of learning. So it's a vocabulary lesson too. Just like every other class in this place. Und von seinem Lohn werden 25% abgezogen. Abgezogen? Minus. Minus. Wie viele Euro? Every single one of these youngsters arrived in Germany without their parents. Now they're studying for their first school diploma. 18-year-old Hasib was separated from his family too. He came to Germany from Afghanistan three years ago. I started a new life in Germany, he says. That means I really started from scratch. First to learn the language, then a new culture. Everything in Germany is new to me. But I believe I'll make it. I'm trying to succeed. Success is something everyone here is hungry for. But first they need an education. And for refugees in Germany, that's tough to achieve. In most German regions, compulsory schooling ends at age 16. And with it, the right to an education. Michael Stenger sees the potential in these young people and insists it has to be encouraged. He founded the Schlau School 14 years ago and says he's constantly amazed by the kids' motivation. He says they keep finding their strength, although they've experienced so many horrible things. They say, this is my chance, a new path, this is a new life. He thinks if they manage to harness the negative energy that they experienced and reverse it, they get five or ten times as much in return. They reach for new heights and goals in their lives, and twice, three times, five times more strength. Lots of strength is something the school's 30 teachers also need. Most of their pupils have been traumatized. Some had hardly any schooling in their homelands. Their math teacher says the main problem he faces is that each class is so mixed in terms of the kids' backgrounds and abilities. <laughs> And this German teacher recounts how the kids keep telling her how little they sleep, some only three hours a night. And then during school time, concentrated work for six hours a day just isn't possible. School principal Antonia Veramende knows that her 220 students need special attention. She says it means a whole lot of work beyond just instruction. It's actually psychosocial care with the aim of having them participate. 
tatsächlich zu erreichen, dass die, dass die mitmachen können. Und that means a lot of work on relationships and nurturing trust, because the students have simply lost a lot of trust in people. viel Vertrauen in Menschen verloren haben. I visit Hasib. He lives in a building run by a Munich charity, together with other young refugees. Today he's cooking an Afghan dish together with his neighbors. It's a piece of home in a strange land, but also reminds him of the hard times before his escape. He says, I never thought like a child. I wasn't at all like a boy. In Germany, boys play soccer and don't even think about life. They just do what they want. I wasn't like that. I was always thinking and always made sure I'd get by, that someday I'd achieve a good life. Hasib hopes to find stability in Germany, to train for a job and get steady work. But those hopes are precarious ones. He still has no permanent residency status. Hasib grew up with his aunt and uncle. He's never known his biological parents. I have a photo of my father, he tells me. Is this? This one. I never met him. When someone asks, do you have a father? I say, I used to, but not anymore. I only have a picture of him. Zulema's past has left behind emotional scars. She's tormented by memories. We've agreed not to discuss what happened to her family. It's still too painful for her. Zulema lives in a dormitory for girls. She tells me she'll probably never see her homeland again and that maintaining contact is hard. She describes calling her homeland. Her great-grandfather asks, how are you, Zuhluma? She answers, I'm fine. And then the line suddenly goes dead. There's no reply. And then she thinks, yep, someone was listening. It's insecure and dangerous. She does have contact with her family, but it's rare. Zulhuma managed to rescue only a few mementos from her home. They include some items of traditional costume. This is, uh, this is a traditional Uyghur cap, she says. It's called an endopa. She only has these two pieces, the cap and the scarf, and her Uyghur flag. Zulhuma isn't the only one at the Schlau school who feels uprooted. Hello, Martina. Hello, Zulhuma. How are you? Good. Yeah. How are you? Good. Can I sit? Yeah. When the challenges get the better of her, Zulhuma seeks out Martina Unga, the school's social worker. Martina has been waiting to speak again with Zulhuma to find out what her next steps will be. Yeah. What takes place in an asylum review? Where do I find work afterward? How do I write a job application? All questions that worry the young refugee. I was so afraid, says Zulhuma, and she helped me. She says that Martina is like a mentor to her. No matter what the problem is, she knows that she can go to Martina and that she will help her, no matter what day it is. She's even there during school vacations. Zulema thinks she never stops working. <laughs> Martina answers, well, thankfully, sometimes she does. 97% of kids enrolled at the school leave with a diploma in their hands. And almost that many land a job training position afterwards. This proud alumnus is about to start a new career. Founder Michel Stenger loves to tout such success stories. He said they're proof that all the effort was worth it. He says it's vital that the kids are cared for, not just in school but across the board, that they don't fall through. That's important and that's what the school provides. 
But the real spark is something our staff can only encourage. And when it happens, it's the greatest thing. I sit in on another lesson. This time, it's German class. The teacher, Brigitte Huber, uses postcards of paintings for the lesson. She asks the kids to come forward and select one. The young people from around the world are supposed to describe what they see in the artworks, their thoughts and feelings about them. She wants at least one sentence from each student. I slowly realize that today's lesson isn't just about vocabulary building. It's also about learning to share in words things like memories, wishes and hopes. It's teaching and therapy all in one. I always felt so alone, but not anymore, Zuluma says. I've learned German. I've come to know other cultures, Germanys, and others. Now, everything's okay. Being an accepted part of a community, that's the key to security and stability. Hasib says the school is like a family, and when he's not at school, he misses that. The difficult pasts of Zulhama and Hasib will always accompany them. But at this school, They've also found out that there's a way forward.